This is The Culinary Life, conversations with scholars, chefs, nutritionists, farmers, and others who recognize that the production and consumption of food, beer, and wine connect us all. Hosted by Dr. A. Werner Absenger, director of the Sekia Institute for Culinary Education at Grand Rapids Community College. So I'm here today with Professor Shield Renaissance. Very good to have you. Thank you, Werner. Good afternoon. Uh, so we are going to be talking about the Internationale Kochkunstausstellung in Erfurt, right? Or, or if you prefer, the Culinary Olympics. Oh, yeah. the, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I forgot for a second. Okay. So the Culinary Olympics are happening in Erfurt, Germany. Yes. Uh, this fall, 2016, right? Yes. So... Uh, I, I'm interested to talk to you about it. One, obviously, you are uh, a culinary instructor at SAIS, but your role in the Culinary Olympics, what is your role? I mean, it's a fascinating story. So you're going to be a judge, but you also helped write the rule book, right? Yes. Go well, ahead. Well, in the world, there are a few uh, world, world, uh, worldwide competition, uh, international competition. There is one in uh, Singapore, which is also which was also this year in April, it's every two years, and then there is one in uh, Frank in uh, Erfurt, which used to be in Frankfurt. It mm-hmm. was, the the Culinary Olympic was started in the late uh, ni- 1800s. Yeah, uh, in Frankfurt, and they stayed there until uh, 1992. Yeah. So so there is Erfurt, there is Singapore, there is Luxembourg. Uh, there used to be a competition in the U.S. also, but uh, it hasn't uh, it hasn't lasted. And there is also one in Basel, uh-huh. which is also one of the big uh, original four big competitions. So, so these competitions um, are judged by international judges, which are accredited by the World Association mm-hmm. of Chef Societies. So, so when we talk about those uh, competitions, we are not just talking about uh, pastries, right? Oh no, the, no, no, oh, okay. no, no, no. There are there are many. These competitions last for four days. Uh-huh. Right. So during these four days, you are going to have competition entered by national team. Uh, of chefs, then mm-hmm. there will be some national team of young chefs. Yeah. Then there will be regional team. There will be teams of chefs uh, of caterers. Mm-hmm. There will be individual competitors in pastry. Yeah, of course, I, I, I have uh, affinity with pastry. Well, yeah, yeah, a little bit, so it right? has tendency of coming first, just like dessert should always be the first thing anyone <laughs> yeah, eats. Yeah. Uh, uh, to make room for the main course yeah, afterward, yeah. maybe. So. Uh, then there are there are also vegetable and fruit carvers who are mm. actually carving live in front mm. of the public, yeah. uh, and they are they are artists, uh, chefs and pastry chefs yeah. who do sculpture uh, of uh, uh, chocolate, mm. uh, sugar, uh, marzipan, mm-hmm. gum paste, wedding cakes. Yeah. Uh, tallow carving also, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's, yeah. and even people who make things with seeds and with rice oh, and nice. it's, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. a great. It's a, these are big eye openers. Uh-huh. So it's a huge event and obviously there is many judges, right? Yes. But uh, let's talk about you specifically and what you will be judging. So let's talk about first the competition you'll be judging and then let's talk about the rules involved and how you're going to go about judging and how you help to create those rules. Well, actually, this year is going to be is, is going to be very different for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I competed in the Olympic in 1988, what? and then uh, while I was working at the Amway Grand Plaza yeah. with Daniel Gallier, with Mike Green, with the Team Junta, all mm-hmm. of us were in the Culinary Olympics. They were in the national team. I was in the Team Michigan. They were in the savory. I was in the pastry. So after I came back from the Olympic in 1988, uh, that's when I can uh, I can say my uh, competition. Uh, uh, expertise really came up, mm-hmm. and uh, and I was then invited to judge other competition to compete even in other mm-hmm. competition, and uh, and then in 1992 I went to the Olympic as a visitor, what? and when and uh, then in 1996 the Culinary Olympic were moved to Berlin for mm-hmm. one year. And I was invited to judge. It was the first time I judged the Olympic. I had judged Luxembourg uh, two years before, Luxembourg being the other big one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I judged in 96, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012. 
And then this time the World Association asked me to be an observer. Oh. So the observer, there are two of us. It's a Jakob Magnusson from uh, Iceland and mm-hmm. myself. It's the first time that uh, uh, an American pastry chef is uh, the observer over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, our role, Jakob and I, will be to go uh, everywhere in the competition yeah. through all the categories meet with the judges uh, talk to the 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 participant to the organizers in order to collect data information uh-huh. and uh, and and uh, and utilize this information to develop new rules mm-hmm. or new criteria or help set the future competition uh, even better than they mm-hmm. were than they will be this time so so, so in other words it's uh, what what you're attempting to do is quite an elaboration on your previous role as a judge right oh yes now, yes. now you're not only uh, now you're not going as a judge but now you're going to see how other judges are doing and how you essentially could improve the competition by how it is being charged, right? Yes, because in the past I would be, so So the all these big competition are supervised or guided, mm-hmm. should I say, by the World Association of Chef Society, uh-huh. which is an organization which has over 80 countries as members. I think it's even uh, 100 something, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So, and this organization has a president. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the president is Charles Carroll Uh from the US. And then it has a few committee, education committee, public relation committee, competition committee, culinary competition committee. And in 2008, I was invited to be the pastry chef uh, in the uh, culinary competition committee. So during these years, uh, I so then by then I had already judged uh, the large competition Singapore, mm-hmm. uh, Erfurt, Luxembourg, Chicago, uh, the Clinic Classics. So after having judged all these competition and after I've been, been after having been quite vocal about the need for pastry chef to get more information, more training, mm-hmm. so so the standard would be maintained and even e- elevated. Uh, then the World Association of Chef Society asked me, well, would you want to be uh, the person representing your colleagues on the culinary competition committee? So I'm the one who, who received the, the good news and the bad news from the pastry yeah. chef, and some of uh-huh. them are very interesting. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, like last year, a question that came from Hong Kong, somebody had received a gold medal, and uh, after the award, uh, someone realized that there was some... Uh, material that wasn't supposed to be in the centerpiece so i was asked how can you figure it out how we can Mm -hmm. avoid it so i even involve uh i even involve some colleagues from uh, grand rapid uh, community college Mm -hmm. uh, tom niles Uh in the chemistry department to see uh how could we uh, prevent uh, people from cheating so we were looking at spectrometer Uh, obviously they are very expensive yeah uh, so if somebody is listening to this program and has some spare cash, we'll be will welcome the donation of a spectrometer for to the World nice. Association of Chef Society. Because so Tom was uh, telling me uh, that uh, there is possibility to have a spectrometer of a, uh, that could analyze what we are looking for. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So that may be st- f- <laughs> bit of a far far fetched uh-huh. uh, dream, but th- yeah. these are the concerns that pastry chefs have. You know. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah, in competitions. And so you're really looking at, obviously, you're going to have a set guidelines by which you approach every piece that is created by yes, chef, right? Yes, you, yes. So you have a printed guideline and say, you know, what does this look like? What does this look like? How yeah, is the taste? Yes. How is the flavor? But then you also tend to take it high tech and look at to are there ingredients really in there that shouldn't be in there that's very interesting yes huh? and uh, and and so you so the first thing you do when you work when you when you judge like this is you walk the show mm-hmm. it gives you an idea of what is the level mm-hmm. uh, you already know what the countries that are competing and if you're an experienced judge or, or even if you're an experienced competitor you already know who are the trendsetters you already know who are the team to watch. You already know who are the coaches, who are the trainer. Uh, some of these coaches and trainers used to coach a national team, but they may they may have passed the hand to somebody else, and now they may be advising other teams. So you keep an eye. If you know a little bit the inside of the profession, then you know 
you know, watch for this team. You know, like I have a friend, I think he's coaching the team of the Maldives. Uh-huh. He hasn't told me, but I, I, I <laughs> see that he's been traveling a lot in the Maldives, and I yeah. am thinking he's coaching these guys. Uh-huh. So watch out for that, that team, which should, which should spring up, Why? which should elevate mm. his standard yeah. to... to to, to level never achieved yeah. by this country right. before. So you know who are, the, who are the big teams. So the first day you go, you walk through and you look who's competing and then you look at the level. Uh, so if you don't see any of the, P, of the strong team that you expect there, uh, you are going to be watchful. You're going to say, okay, well, there are some still some strong people coming in. So you walk around to give you an idea of what the level is. And then after that, you when when judging starts uh-huh. because you may do that while the participants are installing their displays. When judging starts, then you're on your own. You have your sets. Of, you have the the standards that we established in the book, yeah. uh, which actually could we, have been. We're going to talk about those yeah, in a second. Yeah, which could have been even more. The judging sheet could be even more complicated, more precise, and I introduced some new judging sheets. At least suggested mm-hmm. some new judging sheets, and the older judges say, "My God, you're crazy! <laughs> there is so many criteria, you know." Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, and the reason why I was doing this is because I was thinking. Uh, when that so f- because I had ist- I had listed with the help of my colleagues mm-hmm. what it is that we want to see uh, f- when food is presented yeah. we want to see uh, freshness we want mm. to see compatibility of flavors we want to see some sauces that are shiny yeah. that don't run we want to yeah. see chocolate that thin that shiny but that's not lacquered uh-huh. so all these criteria which which are hundreds what? you know uh, were listed <laughs> and uh, my colleague was saying well it's going to take us forever. So to 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 avoid a such long uh, uh, process, we've created some training courses, and that mm. has taken me uh, in uh, in Norway, in Sweden, mm. in Sweden, in Russia, in Cyprus, in Canada, in South yeah. Africa, Hong Kong. So, so there, I have taught other judges mm. what they should be looking right. for. So you you first go to the competition, and then you you have an idea, and then after that, you 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 may see a display, say, "Oh, this is nice. This is gold medal." And then when you get closer to it, you say, "Yeah, but this they, mm. they have." The same product here in this plate and in that plate, uh, they have not. They have. No, are they really pushing the envelopes? Mm. You see, because to me, competition is the research and development well, arm yeah, of our industry. Yeah. So that's if you don't do it in a competition, you're not do, going to yeah. do it. And that that that's key. You want to see when you go to the Olympics. You want to see brand new stuff. You want to see yeah, cutting edge yeah, stuff. You yeah. don't want to see something emerge that you yeah, know, yes. so to speak, is an old hat, right? Yes, but yes. it's uh, essentially very well done. So. Uh, and so you got some flack from your colleagues about what you brought forth. So tell our listeners a little bit of what it took for you to narrow that list down. How did you, how did you finally come up with a list that was manageable? Well, so, so we, we are going to be judging the displays with, based on specific criteria that mm-hmm. the participant will already have. Yeah. You see, and the thought when I was writing these criteria and these rules and this new score sheet was we would be actually giving the score sheet to the participant before the competition. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, so even so, after after the competition, during there is always a feedback meeting with every group, yeah. you know, with every team or with every category of participant. Then they could almost, they could almost. They could anticipate exactly what the judge were going to right. say because yeah. they either did it or they didn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that <clears throat> would be that's a tool that's probably more practical for the participant than for the judges, uh, because the ju- because they, you have in this competition in some categories you may have fifty displays, a hundred displays to judge, mm-hmm. and you only have a few hours. You know, yeah. so it's you you have to go and you really have to quickly be able to to say okay this this these colors are natural, this anatomical piece is mm-hmm. not correct, this piece we've seen it somewhere else, yeah. this is very original. Yeah. Uh, 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 in, inside is say, well, this is no way this piece can be built that way. There is something inside that allows it to be cantilevered. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so, but only experienced judge can can see this. So, so in order for a judge to be uh, to become accredited, they first have to be uh, rookies, assistant uh, right. judge, uh-huh. yeah. with with some more mature judge, more seasoned judge that are going to say, so what do you think of this? And the young judge is going to say, well, I, I quite like it, and he's going to say, okay, well. 
then tell me why you like it. Uh-huh, yeah. You see, everything has to Get be to quantified uh-huh. and justified. Yeah. Because once at the end of the judging, you are going to have a, a feedback with the participant, yeah. you have to be able to justify your decision. What, yeah. Why was that person awarded a silver medal or, or when that person thought uh, she, he or she gold. deserved the gold, yeah. you know? And, and the other thing, is of course you know we are talking about a huge event which can well to some extent make or break careers absolutely, right absolutely so absolutely. so you don't so you need to be knowing what you're talking about or else you know it's like you have somebody else's you know passion fate everything in their hand at that moment you touch the piece right yes and 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 because of that and 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 and, and because of what you just said i had spent a lot of time developing the judging criteria because I felt that we owe it to the participant yeah. to be able to give them a very thorough uh, look, a very thorough examination of their display, mm-hmm. you know, following the criteria that they received prior to the competition, the rule which they were supposed to follow, you know, and so uh so so yeah we can these these competition make or break so somebody's yeah, yeah. car absolutely absolutely yeah. and and you see it because because some of these chefs you know they becomes become coach so a lot of it is altruistic yeah. you know a, a lot uh-huh. of it is you do it for the goodness of your heart yeah, yeah. You know, it's philanthropic it's altruistic it's generous it's yeah. uh, uh, and uh And uh, so, but some of the chefs get hired by large companies who see the value of having somebody who is uh, an expert at uh, uh, high-level competition, meaning that that person can take the pressure, that person has creativity, that person uh, knows how to work with a a very diverse group of people from from the engineer to the designer to the logistic to the secretaries to... uh, so many people which chefs generally do not interact yeah. with. So, so essentially, a participant at the Culinary Olympics could get a very well-being gig or consulting gig just based on the uh, proven ability of the person to work with so many different aspects of competition and interacting with so many different people, right? Yeah, that has yeah. happened to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, has happened uh, yeah. to me. I've, I've uh, one day in, uh, that was twenty years ago. I was approached by uh, one of the biggest food uh, company in the world, which is in Michigan. And uh, uh, scientist called me and said, "Hey, we hear you're pretty creative." And he had heard that he should, this lady had heard that from a relative of her who is a chef who had competed, and, mm-hmm. and they were looking for some work, uh, some development in pastry and. Uh, uh, so I did, and this relationship lasts until today, and yeah, it's over 20 right. years now. Yeah. And, yeah. and those are the connections you make, which is a perfect segue, I think, we could make into... Obviously, we are talking about an event that happens once every two years, right? Four years. Four, every four once years, every yeah, four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, does, what do events like that do for building community? You know, uh, you make it sound like especially churches, they are pretty tight-knit group, like everybody knows everybody. Yes, yes, and yes. So can yeah. you speak a little bit to how communities developed through competitions like that? Communities uh, develop in, through competition, uh, and that's really an interesting question because we could say so much about it. Mm. Well, if you ever want to compete, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to be watching other people competing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the that's the first link of that community. Right. It's the apprentices. It's the commie, you know. Mm-hmm. And then and uh, and and uh, and then you're going to be given a chance to participate. So if you are part of a team, you may meet uh, once a month or so, or more often, depending uh, on uh, how close are you from the final day. Right. And so you are going to be developing, you're going to be practicing these skills at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, after work, the bake shop is closed, Van Halen full blast in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, two pots of coffee on the heating up. You just aged us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you are going to need, you're going to sacrifice a lot. You're going yeah. to sacrifice a lot of sleep. You're going to lot, you're going to sacrifice 
family time, holidays. Mm -hmm. You you're going to be spending some nights. You know, uh -huh. you're going to get to know your night bakers really well. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, but then because you are you are practicing in your in your operation, and if you are one of the leader of that operation, uh, you have you have another group of people that may join you and that may want to to give you a hand and that's mm -hmm. going to be your staff. Yeah. You know, the young people who are going to say, wow, this is fascinating. I want to learn how to do this. Yeah. So that would be the second uh, right. element uh -huh. of this yeah. community. And then after that, as you, as you practice, you get to meet other chefs uh, from, uh, if you're in a regional team, they are going to be from your region or national team, they're going to be from your country, coming from all over the place. Uh -huh. uh, they're working in hotels, in school, in restaurants, in, in resorts. So there, again, you you expand your network. Right, you know, yeah, community. exactly. Yeah, yeah. You expand your network. You build some relationship. You have somebody that comes with a cool tool that you've never seen before. You say, wow, where did you get well, this? Yeah, you know, yeah. And in return, they learn also from you. Yeah, yeah. So... So then you you are going to have some leaders. You are going to have some right. some uh, some coaches who, who are going to guide you uh, during these uh, very various practices. So there again, you ex you now you are reaching the more mature professionals, uh -huh. and then you may even you probably going to meet the president of the organiz the national organization or the uh -huh. regional organization that sponsors yeah. you. Yeah. Then uh, you're also going to meet. Um, then, then slightly in parallel or, or at the periphery of this relationship, you are going to have the logistic people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you are going to learn about the mold makers. You are going to learn how to use a laser printer. You are uh -huh. going to to learn how to make your own mold. You are going to learn how, how to to think. To think in 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 we would say out of the box, but mm. in in different arena. Right. Uh -huh. You know, you are going to look at you are going to look at a printer or 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 a carpenter, and you say, "Wow, that's cool! I could do that with chocolate." You know. Uh huh. Yeah. So you have so now now you are f you have to have this extra motivation to reach beyond your career in order to bring to your career to your profession mm -hmm. some new inspiration. Yeah. You know? And and that's what I found, you know, I've been cooking for quite some time. And I found that it is what especially with chefs, there's some very interesting aspect going on. You know, obviously we compete, right? Like we, we all got to stay in business. We all got to feed our families. But at the end of the day, chefs are strange creatures because especially in Austria, you know, we just went to another restaurant and helped that person out when they were in the weeds, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we just helped another person, you know, willingly. And I think this is the community which, you know, Olympics great also. It's, you know, yes, it's competition, but at the end of the day, it's all about helping people to become the best they can be, right? Absolutely, because, you know, when somebody has invested years, you know, years of testing and, and training and, uh, and, and trying and testing and, and studying, and perfecting it leads to a, a great community as long as you are uh, as long as you are generous enough and conscious yeah. that you're only one of many yeah exactly and so <clears throat> we only have a couple minutes left but uh, there's two things I want to briefly touch upon one is what can students like if if you say or if you prepare students for competition what skills do they learn and what's important for students to have the experience to go through a competition and then I'm going to ask you a second question. But so, what if they go in the competition like this? The first day is going to blow, blow their mind because yeah. they are going to be exposed to food from all over the world. Right. You know, so they are going to see some ingredients they've never seen. They are going to see some shapes they've never seen. They are going to say, "Oh, we can cut the vegetable like that too." You know, uh, they are going to. Uh, so they they are going to see some some beautiful artistry which is seldom seen even though today now with the uh, with the internet and uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, yeah. social media you so much of it is is everywhere so so the skill that the the skill that you need to go to a competition like this uh, because they are they, they are adapted to student too because but we also have student categories yeah, huh? yeah. so uh, they need to be precise they need to be totally committed they need to be disciplined yeah you know because they have to follow the rule they have to be there on time they mm -hmm. have to uh, uh they have to uh be part of the team they have to contribute you know mm -hmm. uh so so that would be what they would have to to achieve they have to have they have to have passion they have to be willing to sacrifice 
so Everything, much right? time, yeah. so much time to be able to make that chocolate curl just perfect, to pipe that line just perfect. But then, but what we learn is a lot of tips, a lot of tricks, a lot what? of techniques. Yeah, you know that will that will make that will make them more marketable because people that didn't go to that competition didn't see. Yeah, you know. I so there you. is a lot of yeah. good things for for students to hear. So, and my final comment or my final question. Before we started recording, or yesterday, or the day before yesterday, yes. you shared a very interesting story with me about your first competition or of a competition you oh, won. Oh yes, yes. You yes. Were, uh, when you asked that judge why you won, no, my Get, boss, oh, my your, boss. Your boss. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that was 1977, and uh, I had just finished. Uh, that was my third apprenticeship. I had done kitchen, dining room, pastry, and I was lucky to do uh, my pastry apprenticeship in a place called Fauchon in Paris, which, according mm. to the Guinness Book of Record, is the most expensive food store in the world oh, huh. so I did a few scrubs there too but I, I, that will be subject of another story <laughs> and uh, and so uh, I learned about that com uh, competition and I asked the executive chef the executive pastry chef Mr. Bonte if I could do the competition I said yes we always want to encourage our mm -hmm. staff to yeah. compete yeah. because it's such great PR and, right. and out and, and just at the time on the staff of 15 or 17, there were three MOF. Uh -huh. MOF means best worker of France in that uh -huh. kitchen. So yeah. it was something with a lot of power and a lot of integrity and big reputation. So I competed and uh, and uh, with, this, with this help, Mr. Bonté and Serge Breda, his assistant, uh -huh. who helped me even more. And then the next day, the, so I competed, the next day I went back to, to the bake shop and I was working at the bench, which is where I make the croissant or the dough. So I was here, one of the, I was first one down there with Serge. And then uh, Serge Breda told me, so you know what you won yesterday? I said, well, you really gave me a lot of help, uh, and I, I work I work as much as I could, and I sacrifice everything to be able to do to do well. He said, "No, that's not why you won." He said, "The reason why you won is because the guy who's better than you wasn't here yesterday." What an amazing lesson to learn! Huh? What an amazing lesson in humility. Yeah. Making you realize that okay, you follow your passion, you follow your dream, you succeeded, but don't forget that that was just a day's event, right. and you still have colleagues around you who have different passions, but uh -huh. who have lots of strength, yeah. and who all contribute to the well-being of our profession. Yeah. Excellent, Shield Renaissance Professor at Sakya Institute of Culinary Education. Uh, enjoy your time in Erfurt, Germany. Thank you very much. Yeah. I will. Very I nice will. to Thank have you. Thank you. Thank you, Werner. Yeah. This has been The Culinary Life, hosted by Dr. A. Werner Absenger, Director of the Sekia Institute for Culinary Education at Grand Rapids Community College. Produced by GRCC Media Technologies. Get to know us better at grcc.edu slash S-I-C-E. Thank you.